tears, tears of pain, tears of joy. We all have them. And what is it that's different about them? Why are they really important? And uh, I'm going to go through some theories. Some of you have seen me before. You'll have heard some of this before. But as always, when I speak, not everything that comes out of my mouth has been said before. So you may come out very differently. Pay attention. And if you've got any questions afterwards, please do ask them as well, because we've all experienced these types of tears, especially over the last few months. If we haven't experienced them, then people that we love have experienced them. Lots of my clients have experienced them. Fortunately for them and for me, it's mostly been tears of joy. So what did they look like? Well, we all know what they look like. Here's one example. How do tears of pain look for you? How do you look? You may not be sh actually shedding tears, but the feeling of pain is familiar. Tears of joy. Again, we can't always tell immediately which one it is, though if we look for other signs, facial expressions, etc., we can tell. Now, here's something that may be new to you. Do you know that the chemical constituents of tears of pain and tears of joy are different? Especially important in the light of coronavirus because tears, tears of joy indicate that you have a stronger immune system. They actually strengthen your immune system. The chemicals that are in your blood at that time are better at warding off uh, bugs than tears of pain. This was research that was done by Harvard many decades ago, but it is especially relevant nowadays. And which is it that you experience most of the time? So let me go into some of the basic theory. We all have thoughts. We take actions off the back of those thoughts and we get results. Most of the time, for a lot of us, we think the right thoughts, we even take the right actions, but we get the wrong results. And this was me, myself, when I first started in business. The results weren't in line with the actions that I was taking, which was a lot of action, actually. And I was thinking the right thoughts because I'd done a lot of training around the mind. What I discovered was the thing that was getting in the way was emotions. Thoughts, emotions, actions, results. T-E-A-R, tear. And depending on the thoughts that you're thinking, you will feel certain types of emotions. What you are feeling at any moment in time will dictate the quality of the action that you take. And that's the key thing that I really want you to take on. Whatever action you're taking, anytime, anywhere, the quality of that action will be dictated by what you are feeling at that time. And in the times of coronavirus, when a lot of us have been acting out of fear, the results won't be anywhere near as good as they can be if we are acting out of stronger emotions. So remember this, but I'll come back to this. What's the problem of thinking? Well, in the last 10 minutes or so, you had 400 thoughts. How many of them do you remember? I don't remember most of them. I don't even remember a fraction of them. I might remember a few of them. Well, what happens to the rest of them? Well, the rest of them are buried deep into our subconscious and we're not even aware of that thinking. Is it any wonder when we're not even aware of it that we can think the right thoughts on the surface, which is the ones that we're aware of, which is a tiny amount, and yet below the surface, something could be occurring which is completely sabotaging the results that we're getting in our businesses, in our lives. And when you go around the thoughts, emotions, actions, results, diagram that really, it turns out to be a bit like a whirlwind because 60 to 80,000 thoughts every day is a new thought every one and a half seconds or so. You go round and round and round and round, and it is a bit like a storm. You get thrown off at the end, and where's the worst place to be in a hurricane? It's not in the eye of the storm. It's on the edges of the hurricane where the winds are the fastest. That's where you don't just get buffeted, but you get thrown around. And that's what happens to our businesses through what we are feeling. So what's the advantage of emotions? The advantage of emotions is basically there are nine levels. All those thousands of thoughts come down to about nine levels of emotion. And I don't want you to even remember this because when I first came across this, I couldn't remember all the names. So like I normally do, I simplify things and I've simplified it down to this cap, courage, acceptance, peace, 
act flap, which is all the emotions below the line, the line of resistance, the line of which change occurs. And every one of us goes through this, whether we know it or not, whether we admit it or not. I like it to make it even simpler. So I've simplified it to cap and crap. And I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, Peter, but uh, I'll use That's it. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> uh, uh, we had the expression that uh, we're all full of shit at sometimes. It's usually because we're below the line. That's when we're feeling crap and we're projecting that and we are acting from that. It's how to get beyond that, how to get above that into cap. What's the difference between cap and crap? It's the letter R. That's the line of resistance. Let go of resistance and you go from crap to cap. And that's what I teach people to do. How to let go of the resistance that is keeping them below the line. Not all of the time. We all bounce up and down. But some of us spend more time below the line. Some of us spend more time above the line. Now, our results in life reflect where we are most of the time. So if you want to know where you are, just look at the results that you have in life, in business, in relationships, in health. Each one of those has a bearing. Imagine you're going on a journey. Well, if you're in a car, it doesn't matter whether it's manual, it doesn't matter whether it's automatic. We use a gears. And... Which gear do you tend to drive in? Most of us would tend to drive in the highest gear. Why? There are two major reasons. The higher the gear that you drive in, the more miles per gallon that you get because the car becomes much more fuel efficient and the faster you get to your destination. So what has all of this got to do with emotions? Well, this is what it's got to do with those levels. Where do you spend most of your time? That dictates what gear you're driving, your car, your business, your life, your relationships, your health in. And the lower the gear, the harder you're going to have to work and the more fuel you're going to burn. So when you're below the line, there is a net loss of energy. So you put out more energy, then you get back and you feel knackered at the end of the day. That's why people feel really tired. When people are above the line, they inspire, they're energetic they get back more energy than they put out. So there is a net gain of energy. So the higher the, above the line you get, the more energized you are, the lower below the line you get, the more knackered you are. It's a very simple relationship. So again, let me just go into a bit more detail about this because this is the bit that's relevant to you as businesses and in life. When you're in the lower gears, when you're in neutral, in reverse, in first gear, you do little or you do nothing. The lower you are, the less you do. Thoughts, emotions, actions, results. Do little or nothing, you get back little or nothing. That's why people who are depressed don't do much because they're in the level of apathy at that point. Depression is in the realm of apathy. People who are grieving, grieving because they've lost a loved one, because they've lost a job, because they've lost a relationship, they also don't take much action. And because of that, they don't get much back. Fear is the turning point. Fear, there is fight, which is going towards something. There is flight, which is running away from something. And then there is freeze, which is why fear is also in the realm of doing little or nothing, because the majority of fear doesn't actually produce much action, certainly not quality action. When you're in the middle three gears, you do more. What do I mean by that? You do more as in you work hard. The higher you go, but you're still below the line, the harder you work. And yes, you do get some results. There are many people who become successful through this. I tend to end up coaching a lot of people like that because they're knackered at the end of the day. They don't have much of a life because they are working all the time. They're working harder after success than they did to get there just to maintain the success that they achieved. So there's nothing wrong with it. You can achieve results and you will achieve results because you're taking more action than if you're in first gear or neutral. But it comes at a cost and the cost can be to relationships, to health, to all sorts of other areas of life. If you start to operate in the higher gears, if you learn how to get above the line and then stay above the line most of the time, you become more. And in becoming more, you find that you are getting back more than the energy that you put out. 
which means you can be more. You can be more of the person that you really are, more of the person that you want to be. Probably the, the reason why you got into business in the first place. You got into business, into, you know, and the result a lot of business people are seeking is to be a certain type of person that then can take all of that success that is in business out into their life. So it's about being more. And when you are more, when you're being more, you don't have to do as much. So be more, do less. It's one of the more kind of sayings that I have. The more you become, the less you have to do. But let me just break that down slightly more uh, in the sense, sorry, let me just go back to that. So when you are being more and you're doing less, what is it that people who are leaders do? People who are being more, are primarily working with the people who are doing more, which is the people in lust, anger, and pride. People who are doing more, who are working harder, usually end up managing the people in apathy, grief, and fear. So the winners are the people who are being more. The losers are the people who are in apathy, grief, and fear, in the lower gears. And the middle, they are the hard workers. They achieve results but they are the hard workers. They are, in effect, the worker bees of the people who are being more. But when you become more and you do less, you can achieve more, but without paying the price. I paid the price through my health. Now I'm working far less than I used to, and I'm achieving much better results, not because I'm any cleverer, but because I've understood this relationship between emotions and the actions that we take and the quality of the actions and the results uh, that we get. And you might go to sleep looking like this baby. You might actually smile. You might actually be full of joy. You might go to bed with tears of joy. And that makes the difference because you'll sleep well as well.